Well, good morning. It's good to be with you. As you can see, I'm not outside. I tried that and the rain was too loud for me to be able to to hear and the noise was a bit too much. So I've come inside and um, just wanting to share with you a time in the Word this morning. I trust that you are doing well and that you're praising God for what He's doing in your life this week. The last couple of weeks we've been looking at the book of First John and talking about, well, actually, really, the, the, the topic in John is love. And we talked about loving one another. We talked last week about loving difficult people and how that, what that looks like and how to, how to sort of navigate that. And this morning, I want to talk about love uh, again, but address something that John does in John chapter 2, where he talks about loving the things of this world. I want to begin by talking about someone from church history, a man by the name of Augustine, or Augustine, however you want to, to say that. I say Augustine. Um, Augustine was one of the most influential theo theologians and philosophers um, in his time. And he explored the idea of love in detail. Um, his own testimony was that as a young man, he had explored all of the the excesses of the world and was actually quite a quite a prolific sinner if you want to call it that and then god found him and he was miraculously converted and began to study and it was a, it was always a brilliant man but um until he found the lord he didn't get a hold of the the flesh at all and he he wrote later about what he called the disordered loves and especially writing for christians he said you know the the problem isn't necessarily that we love the wrong things is that we often love the right things in the wrong order that's why he talked about disordered loves um, he defends his argument by uh, pointing to Jesus' words in Matthew 26, where Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so for him, it was loving God first and then your neighbor second. That was kind of the, the order of, of your loves. John takes it a little further in, in his book in John chapter 2, and he says this in verse 15, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Now, John addresses something that we all know by experience because we've all struggled with the things of the world. Now, you might be asking, what does he mean, the things of the world? Well, we know the draw, and as Augustine said, the draw of, of things that can be good, but also can turn and and be bad when we when we get them out of order, or when we take them to excess. For example, food is a wonderful thing that God has given us, and it is a, a blessed thing to be able to enjoy good food. But if you love food, too much and you allow yourself to be obsessed with food, there's all kinds of really bad effects of that. Of course, your health will suffer, but also um, the distraction of 
of putting food in front of everything else in your life. The Bible actually calls it gluttony, eating, eating too much food. So the point that Paul is making, or that John, sorry, is making here is that if you put the love of anything in this world before the love of the Father, it's very difficult to, to genuinely love God in the way that you should. Um, and John points out some problems with loving the things of the world because he says it comes from our desire desires the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, and the pride of life. So what are those things? Well, we, we know the desire of the flesh, our flesh desiring things that we shouldn't have. This is especially seen in our desire as human beings for sex and sexual things. And God has said a biblical sexual ethic is that I want you to enjoy what I have created in man and woman, but I want you to, to enjoy that in the boundaries of a committed, loving relationship in marriage. And God does that because he knows that that protects the commitment, it protects the, the individuals in that relationship because they can freely give themselves to one another without fear of, of being betrayed or without mistrust and all of those things, but they're committed to one another. Children often are the result of, as you, you would know, I don't have to give you a biology lesson, but children are often the result of, of that sexual union. And so it, it gives us a place where children can be brought up in a loving, committed, faithful home. And that's, that's why God says that's where that needs to be expressed. It's not a desire that's wrong. It's a desire that God has placed in us, but it needs to be expressed in the right way. Well, the world has said, and Paul is using, or I keep saying Paul, John, sorry. We talk so much about Paul and, and the other apostles. But John here is saying that the world has taken those things, things like sexual fulfillment in us, and made it a, a thing that is to be freely expressed and satisfied at any time, anywhere, with anybody, without putting those limits and boundaries around it for our protection. And so when we allow our love to, to be disordered, as Augustine called it, and to put that before our love for God and love for others, because let's face it, if we continue down that line with that one, we know that often expressing our desires and our trying to get our sexual fulfillment at the expense of another person can be damaging to that other person. It's not very loving to them. And so there's, there's all kinds of problems with these desires of the flesh. And it's not, just, it's not just sex. It can be money. It can be power. It can be all kinds of other things that get disordered in our, in our lives. So, so John says that the, what's in the world is the desires of the flesh, also the desires of the eyes, seeing things that, that we want, and that can be both in the sexual area, in the material area, wanting more than we have. Um, the whole idea of materialism is, is an interesting one. We enjoy beauty, we enjoy nice things, we enjoy comfort. All of those things are not bad in and of themselves, but when they become the focus and we put the love of that in front of our love for God, then all of a sudden the desires of the eyes become a problem for us and then we want to, to do whatever it takes to get those things, including making a priority of 
money and things. And, and this is where things like gambling and, you know, dodgy ways, if I can put it that way, of, of getting money become a real issue for us because we have such a desire for the things, the material things that we want, that we end up deciding that we would do anything to get those things. And we sacrifice often our family, our friends, our, our time, um, even allowing work, which is a good thing, to help us support our families and to have what we need and to have enough to be able to be generous with others. That becomes our obsession and this desire of the eyes gets in the way and begins to take over our lives. And that love for the world, and in this case, the world is those material things, comes before our love for God. Again, disordered in our loves. Material things aren't bad in and of themselves. Having a nice house, having a car to drive, having clothes to wear, all of those things are, are good in and of themselves in the right place. But when they get disordered, <clears throat> when we begin to desire those things because we see them, then that, that love gets out of whack. And of course, the world knows how to tempt us. The world knows. I mean, all you have to do is look at advertising and the way that advertising makes everything look so desirable. When you watch an ad on TV for a new car, it's sleekly presented with these very good-looking models, men and women who look great, who have, you know, the perfect family, who want to want to drive somewhere, or and it's it's pretty much a pull for this very thing, the desire of the eyes. There's one more that John talks about that I want to talk about before we finish this morning, and that is the pride of life. John says, in the world is the desire of the flesh. We talked about that. <coughs> Excuse me. The desire of the eyes and <clears throat> the pride of life. Now, we understand what pride is. We understand that it's very easy to become self-focused, to become so absorbed with me and my and mine that <clears throat> it can begin to change us. It can begin to disorder our loves in such a way. You remember the story of the, the Greek god, or not a god, I think he was just a, a man in Greek mythology called Narcissus, and he became enamored with his own image in a pool of water. And, you know, the story goes on, and that's where we got the word narcissism from, where, which is really describing someone who is all about them themselves. Well, this is exactly what this verse of Scripture is talking about, the pride of life, the things that we put as in front of God relating to ourselves, being proud, wanting everything for, for us, wanting to be the center of everyone's life around us, uh, making sure that, and, and the world talks about this, in glowing terms, you need to look after yourself. You need to do something for yourself. You need to be caring for yourself all the time. When Jesus came into the world and he said, put others first, love God first, love your neighbor next. And somewhere down the, down the list, we come. And it's an amazing thing, isn't it, when the, the loves get disordered. Now, let me say very clearly, that doesn't mean that we are not to make sure that we're healthy and well and, and taking care of our own health. That's something that God wants us to do as well. But again, we're talking about loving the world. And here, John has told us that that involves the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
wanting to always be first, wanting to always be out there and only looking after ourselves and only putting us first. Pride's an awful thing. It can be very destructive in relationships, in families, in, in all kinds of ways. And here's what he says. He says, those things, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life, are not from the Father, but they are from the world. You see, God gives us a balanced, godly way to fulfill our, our fleshly desires, our, you know, those things that we want, the eating and drinking and sexual needs. God says, here's how you fulfill those things. I want you to enjoy those things in these ways, in this context. Then the desires of the eyes, the same thing, those material things that God has blessed us with. He made this world, he made these beautiful things and wants us to enjoy them, but not to be obsessed with them. And then the pride of life. God has put value in each and every one of us. He did that by giving his son Jesus so that we might have identity in him. And yet we take that and make the identity all about us. So you can see the issue, the disordered way that our loves can get out of whack. John finishes in verse 17 by saying this, The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. John says, get your loves in the right place. Order. Don't love the world or the things of the world above the Father. Love Him first and allow Him to help you to balance these other things in your life so that they are ordered rather than disordered. Some real challenging things to think about today from this passage, and I hope that you will be able to th think through those in your day today and ask God to help you to get your loves ordered right. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and grace and mercy. Thank you for the Word of God and the way it challenges us to get things in line the way that you desire for us to. Thank you for the gifts, the wonderful gifts of the things that we have. But Father, we know that we need to put those things in the right order, the way you have designed them to be, so that we can Enjoy them in the, in the way that you have desired. I pray for each and every person listening this morning that you would work in their lives, bless them, guide them, take them through their week as they seek to love you first and put all of these other things in the right order in their lives. Guide and direct us now and bless us until we're able to meet again. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for listening in today, and we trust we'll see you on Sunday morning once again as we meet together for worship. God bless.